Well, hello and welcome to another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop video. This time round, we're looking at part three of the Ferrari F40 restoration. Well, here I am with Ryan at Cheshire Prestige Paintworks, who is uh, going to be um, grappling with the F40, but winning, mm. I think it's fair to say. Yep. Um, so, we're here to uh, to um, debunk, um, to uh, smash, to um, get rid of all sorts of myths around Ferrari F40 bodywork. Yep. And you've, uh, fortunately, this is right up your street, isn't it? Yes, this is my background. Right, so we're going to uh, just delve into uh, the wonders of carbon fibre and Kevlar and such things. So, Ryan, we have here a, I mean, Tony Willis on the last video, part two, yeah. um, who is super, super, super knowledgeable on the history and the detail of these cars. Yeah. Um, he uh, confirmed what we already hoped for and sort of knew, and that was that this is basically an excellent car. It's a wonderful canvas to start from. Yeah. Because it's never been any serious accidents. No. But you have... Uh, ascertain that it's had one or two blow-ins in one or two places over the years which localized repairs etc yeah the car's never had a full repaint it's all factory paint that's been tidied up and blended and um, there's been a few local repairs on the rear quarter up the spoiler area there lower down where the heavy traffic is and the stone chips are those type of areas really front front lower half of the clam um, just general wear and tear tidy up areas okay now these cars uh arrived at the factory in a sort of pink primer yeah as i understand it yeah could you tell me a little bit about that yeah so the 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 myth <laughs> the myth the myth with f40s is that the paint is so thin you can see the carbon fiber substrate through it right i'm not saying the paint's not thin you can't see through it so the body shelf derived in a high build pink primer. Um, you can actually see it on this panel here. This is one. This is one we we wrote off earlier. Yeah, right? exactly. So um, so here you can see the carbon fibre there. That's that's the, the the bottom layer, if you like. Yeah. And then you have a very thin layer of the epoxy resin. Yes. And then there's this very thick. Well, it's a thicker layer of um, like a filler primer. Yep. And then this is the, the, the ground coat, which is a pink primer, which the reason they do that is the red sits better over the pink than it does over white or over black or a gray primer. And, That's and, then, interesting. and then obviously you've got the top layer of red. So in terms of the layers that you've got to go through to be able to see black, it's impossible. Yeah, and this is, this is yeah. factory F40 paint. That's we're factory at paint, here. yeah. So, right, this is a part of a front wing off, off an F40, yeah. uh, which has never been repainted. No. So instantly, this business about being able to see the weave, actually see the weave, and we've got some carbon fibre weave here, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, to, to actually be able to be able to see that through some sort of translucent paint, um, et cetera, et cetera, that is basically, what you're saying is that's not true. No, yeah. and it, the, re the reason for it is, and, and the print through itself, the, the, the bodies are, this was the first car of its type to have this type of bodywork, externally anyway, right. all over. Um, and the product's that raw and it's, it's a really new tech and they had, I think it was 13 months to develop the car yep. before they had a running prototype. So the, 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 because it's early doors, early carbon fibre, early carbon fibre Kevlar, early epoxy resins, the, 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 whole, the whole raw product and the way this was manufactured back in, back in the uh, late 80s um, was, was part of the reason why you see the print through. Now, the, on modern supercars like the Paganis, um, your Koenigseggs the Pro, and the McLarens, the, the process is that much better and the top surface is that much better and you get the, the reflections yeah. stand. Um, these are quite an inconsistent layup. Um, so you get this inconsistency in, in the way it's made and manufactured. 
and the product that's painted on the top actually sinks into the, yes. the base layer, if you right. like. So and that's where you get your carbon fibre weave from. That's where you see the weave. So yeah, yeah. all the product that sat on top of the carbon fibre, which is quite raw and, um, and, and, and old tech, is, is, is being printed through onto that what is at the bottom. I seem to remember, um, I'm sure people will be, uh, as ever, very happy to correct me if I'm wrong, mm. but I think the, when the Countach Quattrovalvol came out in 1985, yeah. um, that was the first, the engine cover, this engine lid at the back, yeah. was the first part, the first part of carbon fibre that was used on a large bit that was used on a production car. Yeah. Because you can actually see, again, with the heat of the engine, yeah. the paint sinks, yeah. you can see the weaves start to come through, which yeah. is lovely. Yeah. But um, that's not how they left the factory. It's, no. It's, on, it's the process of time, isn't it? It's time and heat. Yeah. So it's heat cycles. So you'll, you'll, you'll notice, well, I wasn't about, but when these came when it came from the factory new, these would have been quite a smooth None finish. None taken. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, when these were made, um, they would have left the factory quite smooth. And we know a lot of them got repainted at dealership level anyway, because they were poor quality. Yes. So it, it was all about weight. Yeah, yeah, it's all. I mean, like aircraft, they tried to presumably try to make the paint super thin. Yeah. Because an aircraft, it's a big deal, paint thickness on an aircraft. Yeah. It's one extra passenger or not. Exactly. That's what the paint thickness equates to. Gra grams add time. Exactly. So uh, yeah. we're making a race car for the road. We don't want time. Precisely. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, they could have done it. I mean, th th there was ways around it back then, but th the whole raw idea with an F40 was a race car on the road and to keep it as minimalistic as possible. So in that process, the, the carbon fibre substrate and Kevlar is not great. Hmm. It's, as you say, it's new tech. It was new technology. New tech, no. This was, this was uncharted territory, yeah. particularly on a road car. Yeah, and it's almost the opposite to what any car restorer does. We go for a perfect finish. We're blocking and sanding, perfect reflections. And then you've got, so when we go and do this, again, we'll have the same process. We'll block all this down and it'll be smooth and perfect. And over a few cold, warm, cold periods, it will sink back into its weave. Right. I mean, so this, again, we're debunking something here because people over the years have said, oh, if you can see, see the carbon fibre weave texture in the paintwork, it's original. It's absolutely not true. No, it could it? have been painted two years previously. Amazing. And the weave would be back. Yeah. Yeah. So an, an original F40 is very difficult to determine, actually, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you've got to literally sand the car to find out if there's how many layers of paint are on there. Hence, we know this one's never been painted. We've got, right. one, we've got, one, we've got one coat there, that's yeah, it. Sure. So we yeah. know on top of the pink, we've got one coat of red, that's it. So it, I, know, I know from looking at this, that car's never been painted, bar the areas that have had right. blow-ins. Right. Less is more, isn't it, with the whole thing? Without a doubt. I mean, this, the nice thing about it, because there's no accident damage anywhere, it's got scrap, little scrapes and it's got little chips. So we basically use what's there now as a, as a filler, if you like, and we block all that back through. Um, any filler applied, we're not actually using filler, we're using the carbon fibre paste. Um, so there's some chips lower down on the sills where we'll right. use that and we'll re reseal that once we've done all those repairs and then we'll go for red. Okay, now, interestingly, mm. with Tony, because um, you were there, we, you weren't on camera, but no. you came over. I was taking it all in. <laughs> <laughs> so were we. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we took in more than you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, um, the, 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 the little bimps on the bonnet, yep. it, um, they, uh, now, can you explain again, using your trusty bit of Ferrari F40 wing? Yeah. So we've got this, um, did you say this was aluminium? Yes, this is aluminium honeycomb. Um, we've got a carbon Kevlar um, layer at the back. Yeah, very thin. Yeah. Then an aluminium honeycomb um, sandwich and then carbon Kevlar top. Right. So when the, the, the bumps appear, Yeah. Um, what causes that basically? What's happened? In terms of the, on the top of yes. the clam. Yeah. So it's either heat. So the, the, the carbon fiber at this point is delaminated from the aluminum honeycomb. Right, yeah. So it's heat either from top or above, uh, 
either from the top or below. Right, well... Uh, I've got a feeling it's from uh, below. And I think I know where you're going with it. Yeah. Brakes. Brakes, yeah. I think yeah. it's been used hard at some point. Yeah. Brakes haven't been left to cool. I either ran it round the track, yes. cool off brake. I think they've yeah. come in hot at some point and it stood hot. Right. OK, well, let, we've yet to determine what the condition of the turbos are like on the car, because that's the other thing with F40s. Um, for my sins, I used to be um, uh, a technical person in the Ferrari Owners Club of Andalusia when it first started in the 1990s. And yeah. I remember somebody um, buying an F40, which, of course, then was still a 10-year-old car or whatever it was. Yeah. And we'd, we all went to Jerez, the Grand Prix circuit, for the day. Yeah. Um, and he came straight into the pits in his F40, yeah. having done a few hot laps, yeah. turned it off, next yeah. thing, boom, the whole thing went on fire. The worst thing you can do. Because the turbos had overheated. Because <laughs> yeah. modern cars have got water-cooled turbos, cool yeah. and cooled turbos, yeah. and these just rely on engine oil circulating. So if, if um, again, I'll, I'll say it again, I've, I've touched on this before, but if, if you are lucky enough to know to own a early turbocharged car, let it idle for a minute or two before you switch it off. Um, and obviously the same, you know, as you say, if you, you don't pull in with hot, hot brakes and... Not uh, hot brakes, hot engine, no. Um, and that's, so you think it's quite possible then that the heat from underneath has, has caused, just caused it. Yeah, that's what I think. to uh, expand yeah. slightly. I mean, we're yet to investigate that, but that, that's what that area leads me to, especially it being at 12 o'clock above the wheels. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, does th that make sense? I mean, the, the thing that this car yells is originality. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Uh, in, in, even if it has been used on track days, they've driven it properly and they've treated it properly. Yeah. I mean, again, it, the, the part of the paintwork that has been done on the car is good, really, because they've just looked after it rather than go for a full ball restoration. Yeah. Um, it's it's just been tidied up and kept on top of. There's, yeah. no, there's no damage in terms of crash damage right. anywhere on the car. Which is extremely unusual yeah. for F40. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's no, there's no crash damage anywhere. There's um, just, just marks and dents and little scrapes right. and chips. This is off a... Did you say it's, it's off a... Group B, group B Audi Quattro. Right. And this is Kevlar, isn't it? Yeah, that's, Kev that's carbon Kevlar. So that's the same mix as this. Right. So, obviously, we've got the bits on the sills there. Yeah. Which you have to step over to get in it. Yeah. That is the same as the bodywork, is it? Yes. It's a carb so it's a carbon... So we've got this bit of Kevlar here, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, that's Which Kevlar. You handily... And that is amazingly light. I don't yeah. know what that is. Nothing, yeah. <laughs> I mean... It's less than a paper plate. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah, but so strong. Yeah. And yet uh, the raw material is like a T-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. And this is... The carbon fibre matting we've got here. Yeah. So this is, this is a combination of the two. Combination of those two, yeah. is why you get this interesting visual effect. The black it. and the yellow. I mean, yeah. this is, it's all, it's still something of a black art. A myst there's some mystique around this, even 35 years on, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, it's very much spacecraft material. Um, again, and you can see the, the, re the reason you get the, the, the print through on the paintwork is, is obviously this, this is the pattern and obviously the, the, it's sat on top of that. Yes, exactly. So it's the woven material that you actually see. Yeah, and looking across this, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, that's a work of art in itself, isn't it? Yeah. It's too good to put underneath a car, isn't it? It's designed to. That's what it's going to, yeah. 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 Obviously, round the back window, this was an area where Tony talked about this um, sort of sealant that seals the back window on. It's too scruffy, you know, it, it's everything's it, pattern versus yeah, restoration. Uh, if we weren't taking this out, I would have agreed with Tony fully and said leave it with the, um, the faded stripe, but yeah. it actually does a job, the stripe. The stripe's actually a, a primer for the adhesive to work to bond the screen in. Yeah, exactly. So we need to reapply. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And one thing we're also determined to do is leave the factory overspray on places. Definitely, yeah. Because, again, people have removed that over the years because yeah. they thought it was a previous paint job or something. Yes, exactly. Not knowing it was no, factory. No, no. And obviously this car's not been painted. It's had the, the blow-ins, as we've, as we've found. Um, the overspray is everywhere where it should be. It's through, mainly through the, the vents and the knacker ducts, you know. It's, yeah. it's through those where you have the overspray. Yeah. Wonderful.
Um, and th the other thing is, everything's in such fabulous condition. Every, I mean, everything came off the car perfectly. There's not yeah. one bit broke. No, no it all came apart. Looking at bits here, you know, we got uh, this. Um, look at the condition of that. That's ca the original cadmium plating, mm. which is still fantastic. Yeah. Just wonderful. Yeah. Um, what, a, what a lovely, lovely thing to work with. And things like this one that got buried in the door, that... It, I mean, you'd expect to see something, because the weather runs down the doors, the wet doors, the condition yeah. it's in. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. Um, yeah. Uh, and this is the, uh, the luxury version with the uh, wind-down windows. The windy windows. Yes. Yeah. Be still my beating heart. <laughs> 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 I would feel thoroughly spoilt and, um, yeah, driving an F40 with wind-down windows. With the windy windows. Um, but... Uh, that's great, Ryan. Um, well, um, I think one of the, the shocking aspects of this is this is the the door frame that you've dug out from this from this door. Yeah. Um, and that's reasonably heavy. Yeah. It's steel with a bit of glass in it and a seal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then that that with the window mech itself behind you there yes I think them them two weigh probably more than the actual door carcass itself yeah. it's a bear that's Amazing. yeah and again you can see the weaving here yeah very raw um yeah but very raw yeah with one one piece holding it I mean that's incredible yeah to, to be you know you could can you pick that up with your little finger Probably. Yeah. Look at that. There you go. Try doing that with a 308 door. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, of course, again, it's, we have to remember, this is essentially a Ferrari 308 under the surface. Yes. Yep. Chassis, etc. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of 1950s technology, and I say that in very hushed tones. Yes. You know, every every Ferrari within a... Um, a 360,000 mile radius will be throwing their arms up in <laughs> horror and saying, ah, it's not, but it's, it, you know, it's a, it's a chassis underneath. Yeah, exactly. And if you saw yeah. the 308 that uh, James had to weld the chassis on, it was in yeah. a very bad way. Yeah, yeah. Rust. Yeah, we got, we got it when it was good. You got it when it was good. Yeah. And there's, there's a Dino next door that we're doing. Yes. And that's basically... Um, very similar. Very similar. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we can uh, we can just have a, a little scan of the Dino actually while it's here. Okay. Because um, it is. Yeah. You see where it came from. The, the similarities yeah. are actually quite shocking. Yeah. yeah it's definitely a family um, thing. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, but nevertheless, you know, it's um, it's like Porsche did with the 911. They started with something utterly ridiculous and then they, they just developed going. it to death and kept it current and wonderful yeah. and yeah, the rest is history, as yeah. they say. Well. Uh, Here's one that Ferrari made earlier. Uh, Brian's actually restoring a, a Dino for us at the moment, and uh, having picked up the F40 door... <laughs> don't drop that on your toes. That's a Dino door. That's a Dino door. Yeah. The, light, the lightweight baby Ferrari made in the late 60s. Yep. This is the door? That's the steel door. <sighs> yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> and we're actually going to weigh just for mischief, we're going to weigh that door we'll versus there. that one. Yeah. Yes. There's a reason why they went down that route. Incredible. Mm. So the question is, how much does an F40 door weigh compared to a Dino door? A Dino door. Well, very interesting. Uh, and one detail that eagle-eyed Ryan has pointed out while we're here is that this um, piece of equipment, a side repeater lamp, which is fitted to the F40, comes out of there, also fits a 430 Scuderia, exactly the same item there. And this is from a Fiat Punto. So um, Ferrari, we're using Fiat Punto, Side repeater lights in 1987 right through to the 21st century. That's the fun fact nerdiness of the day. Well, that concludes another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop video. 
Hope you've enjoyed it. Please remember to subscribe if you can, and uh, we'll be back with something else very soon.